Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Hope United Church of Christ in Moline. I am uh, Santina Poor and I have the great honor and great blessing of serving as pastor of this congregation. We are so glad you are here on this uh, fall. It really feels like fall morning, although I have learned living here, this is fake fall, right? <laughs> yeah. It Maybe feel like sweater weather and uh, no, it's going to get really hot again. So. Uh, but we're so glad you're here, uh, whether you are here in person in the sanctuary this morning or joining us from your home online today, right now, or maybe at some point during this week. We are so glad you're here to worship and praise our living God together. Um, today is the first Sunday of the month, so it is communion. We'll be uh, sharing the sacrament of Holy Communion together today. So if you're here in the worship space, in the sanctuary, please make sure you got your communion elements when you walked by that table. If you're worshiping with us at home, please make sure you have your elements so that we can join at the table together uh, in our service today. And all those who are here in the sanctuary, please remember to sign in on the pew pad that we have here in our, at the ends of the pew, sign on in and pass it down. And if you're joining us online, please let us know you're here too. Say, hey, uh, in the comments there, and just let us know how we can be in ministry with you or how we can pray with you and just be joined together in some wonderful way today. Um, Big thank you to Laura Black, who is uh, sharing her beautiful gifts at the organ this morning. Thank you so much, Laura. And we only have a sub one day because <laughs> uh, it is a great, wonderful thing to be able to introduce you this morning to our new minister of music, Jack. Stand up, Jack. This is yay. <laughs> We welcome Jack Stremlow to our uh, Hope UCC community and uh, newest member of our staff. And Jack is oh, a gifted musician and vocalist who has, uh, we're just really excited about uh, just you sharing your gifts with us in worship, Jack, and just helping to elevate worship and our time together. So thank you. You'll have a chance to get to know Jack, talk to him. He's, he's all ready for um, requests no. <laughs> and 20 questions and everything. So, uh, so really glad you're here today, Jack. And he'll uh, kick off his ministry uh, at uh, worship next Sunday, September 11th, at our kickoff Sunday, which we'll be doing uh, as an outdoor worship in um, Ben Butterworth Park in the East, East, East Pavilion, right at the border of uh, Moline and East Moline. Who says Hope UCC doesn't cross borders? We do. Uh, we're right there. And um, it's all, it's accessible. It, there's a big parking lot and then a really nice cement path leading to the cement uh, pavilion uh, where we can sit at tables and everything there. Or if you'd like, if you're comfortable navigating the grassy area, bring a chair to sit on or blankets. So looking forward to that. That's at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Youth group today at 3. Uh, we'll be meeting today and then uh, on the 17th, everybody. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun and Carrie Dad is organizing it so you know it's going to be a party. That'll be the pickleball extravaganza on Saturday the 17th. Uh, in the, we're going to set it all up in the rear of the parking lot back here by the Memorial Garden. There's going to be pickleball, there's going to be lunch, there's going to be a bake sale, there's going to be perhaps some friendly competition, uh, some uh, sponsoring of a team, if you will. Uh, it's all a fundraiser for the youth group's next service learning trip. So looking forward to that and uh, just having a really good time out there together next Saturday, weather permitting. Uh, and also we have uh, registration continuing for the all church service trip to feed my starving children in Aurora. That'll be um, September 24th, Saturday. So, cause there's not enough happening in September. We just need a couple more things, but that's going to be a really great trip. So we'll be carpooling. Please see Barb for more details about that, and uh, I hope you'll sign up. We have a few openings left. 
And uh, this coming Friday, we resume our Real Theology series. So hope you can uh, join us for a film and uh, discussion of some of the spiritual or theological or just life impacting elements of, um, of whatever film we are watching that particular month. This month, we're going to be watching the documentary Katrina Babies, as we've just um, uh, remembered the 17th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Uh, so that is this coming Friday. Wow. Pardon me? Oh, uh, if you'd like to bring your own dinner and just have dinner together, that's at 5.30. The film begins at 6, and we watch the film here in the sanctuary on the big screen. The big screen. And then we regather in Fellowship Hall just for the discussion afterwards. So, uh, yeah, the film begins at 6, but 5.30 if you want to bring your dinner and eat together. Other questions? I mean, not questions, uh, announcements. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, September, you know, this kickoff of the program year, we, we, don't, we don't do that in a small way. We go big in September, don't we? As we uh, think about all these things that are happening in the life of our church, we also know that we have um, friends and members in our community who are living through challenging times, uh, times that are filled with joy, times that are tempered by sorrow. So uh, to offer a joyful, a joyful announcement, uh, Brian and Lisa Williams welcomed their grandson last night. Yeah, William entered the world. Yeah, so that's wonderful. I think they have the t-shirts all ready and everything. Like, William's Nana, William's Papa, they are, oh, the pictures are beautiful. That's always such a joy. We also remember to, uh, today uh, Jerry and Lee Blunt are celebrating their 74th wedding anniversary. That is quite the milestone, isn't it? And our congregational sympathy, Letha, we extend to you at the loss of your sister last week. Uh, prayers and sympathy and love as you travel this journey. It's uh, we're with you and holding you in prayer. You know, as we today uh, we're kicking off a new worship series as well, you know, on top of everything else, we're going to begin this new worship series uh, as we examine the United Church of Christ statement of faith. Some of you may be thinking, I didn't know we had a statement of faith. I know, right? We're going to dive into it uh, for the next five or six weeks and really look at it because sometimes, you know, when it comes to our faith especially, to religion, to church, we kind of just kind of go, right? We go, I'm a member, or I've been going there forever, or whatever the church is. And we sometimes need to um, peel back something and really examine something closely. So the statement of faith at United Church of Christ is one of those things. It's, it's always there, but um, sometimes churches, congregations, faith communities, we don't look at it very closely. So we're going to be kind of picking it apart this week. We're going to be saying it every week together and just kind of committing ourselves, recommitting ourselves to it, renewing our awareness of it and what it means for us as followers of Christ, as um, people trying to live uh, in the way and the uh, mission and the beauty with which God has created us. Uh, as members of a specific denomination and a specific local church, something brought us here, right? So um, we're going to kind of explore that a little bit. Today, our scriptures um, communicate how very close God is to us. And, and we're going to look at that in relation to the first part of the statement of faith. And just in our psalm, we hear that, you know, God has knit us uh, in, uh, in the womb, that God knows us so well, so intimately. And then in our, our Hebrew scripture, we continue there, and we're, we're going to um, picture God as this potter spinning the wheel and shaping the clay for a specific purpose. And what does that mean to us? So um, these images of God um, in our lives and what that means to us as we journey this amazing, um, faith-filled, wondrous uh, time together. I just hope that we open ourselves to new understandings of how God is uh, for us and uh, how God might be using us and what 
the purposes and um, amazing gifts God has given us and how we use those to live according to God's will. Each of us, each one of us, is a vessel of great beauty and great infinite, infinite worth. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and come. Let us worship. Will all who are able please rise and join me in the call to worship? Here are the choices God sets before us. Life and prosperity or death and adversity? Listen to the ordinances of God. Love God and walk in the way God commands. Happy are those who delight in God's law. Blessed are all who meditate on God's word. continue our worship together as we lift our voices and offer to God our prayer of invocation, inviting God into our midst. Like a skilled potter, O God, you have shaped each one of us as a unique design. You know us better than we know ourselves. You value us more highly than we can imagine. You weep when we are marred or broken through our own misdeeds or the world's cruelty. We gather now to assemble our prayers for one another and all the world's people in a chorus of devotion. Hear us, gracious God, amen. And as we continue to open our hearts and make ourselves vulnerable to God's healing touch, God's mercy and grace, we offer our confession. We confess those things with, that we have done with intention and those things that have absolutely been an unintended consequence of actions or behaviors that show that we're not living in accordance with God's plan for us. So please offer your confession first in silence. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Awesome, God, we confess that we have become slaves to our own narrow self-interest. 
We pay more attention to our possessions than to you. We try to hide from your all-seeing eye, for we are guilty of devotion to false gods. We are attracted to wicked advice and sinful pursuits that direct our steps away from you. We act without thinking or planning or consulting with you. O oh God, show us the way to a better life. <clears throat> Amen. You know, when we fall short of uh, God's intentions for us, when we fall short in this life, we have hidden from God's call to live and be God's light in this world. But God reshapes us like the potter and that clay at the potter's wheel. We are, we are reshaped. We are rebuilt anew. That potter's wheel, that image of that potter's wheel leads us to a new image as followers of Christ, the, the cross. That just as the potter's wheel is a place of creation, the cross is a place of new creation, of resurrection. And that is what we remember in God's healing love, that renewal, that life-giving renewal and love that God offers us through God's mercy and grace. We are loved, we are forgiven, and our baptisms are renewed. May the peace of our Lord be with you all. Please share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Please be seated. <clears throat> May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you are like uh, this cosmic artist creating for us and in us um, this beautiful life, this breathing into us your very breath, your spirit, so that we may be in this world your presence and your love. You've shaped us, and we pray, Lord, that we will have the strength and the courage and the wisdom to live into the purpose with which you have created us, or for which you have created us, that we will see clearly on this journey, and even when it's not so clear, that we will continue to just listen to you and hear your word Come alive for us as we follow you and your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We come to you with our prayers, prayers that you know before we even lift them ourselves, as the psalmist has assured us, because you know us. And we pray today and lift to you Ron Lyons, who, as he begins his hospice journey that this hospice brings, that the hospice care brings the, the special care and healing that he needs at this, in this season of his life. And we thank you that they provide, that they are there to provide that care for him and his family. And with Ron, we pray for Alice and his, their daughters, their sisters, and family who will accompany him and as they have. And we pray, Lord, just for your healing love to enfold Ron and carry him forward. We pray for Aunt Marlene that she may be strengthened and feel stronger. And we thank you, God, that Judy is feeling better and doing more and finding her way in, in these challenges and that she is doing better. We thank you for the strength you have given her and the healing you bring to her life. We pray for Marsha, Lord, as she strengthens and 
continues between chemo and just physical therapy and the ongoing challenges of her health issues that she and Ken find strength and courage along the way. And we pray your blessings for Letha and her family as they grieve the passing of Ruth and celebrate her and continue to remember the love and light and all that they've shared. We pray, Lord, that in the days and weeks to come, they feel strengthened by each other and their love for one another. And we celebrate the entrance of William in this world, into this world, Lord, and we pray for Katie and Austin, new parents, and Lisa and Brian, new grandparents, and all the joy that this new life brings. We thank you, God, for this wonderful miracle. And we thank you, God, for the amazing 74 years Jerry and Lee have celebrated together every day full of love and happiness. And we pray for the weeks and months and to come for both of them that their love just continues to carry them, their love for each other and their love for their family. And we pray that that love continues to strengthen them and their faith continues to grow and be such an important foundational part of their lives together. We lift to you our prayers as your people, Lord, and we lift them with the hope and love that For all the prayers we speak out loud, for the prayers we type in the comments, for the prayers we lift to you in the silence of our hearts, Lord. We lift them with faith in you and your strong, loving arms holding us and gathering our prayers as you gather us together. We thank you for sending us the one who taught us of your very real presence in our lives, your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat>O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! 
I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Our second reading today, <clears throat> excuse me, is from Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel that seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, of how, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build up and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. Now therefore say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now all of you from your evil ways and amend your ways and your doings. Here ends the readings for today. Please, let's join together and read together our United Church of Christ statement of faith. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call us into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteousness, righteous will sorry, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot conquering sin and death, and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace and courage in the struggle for justice and peace your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. So as I mentioned today, we begin our new worship series uh, focusing on our UCC identity, and specifically the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith. The inspiration for the series grew out of our most recent inquirers class uh, when we were preparing to welcome the new members a few weeks ago, uh, back in, well, I guess that was more than a few weeks ago, in July. Ay, ay, ay. But in that time together, as we read or reread the statement of faith and we reviewed the history and structure of our denomination, I realized that I've kind of started to take for granted uh, how different our denomination is and how much it impacts that the difference uh, in the United Church of Christ and how, how that impacts our faith journeys as members and friends here. Our identity as members and friends of a congregation of the United Church of Christ, it, it means something, even though some people are like, United Church of Christ, what is that? It means something. And like many of us, the UCC, the United Church of Christ, 
it, it, was not, it was not my denomination of origin. I didn't start out in the UCC. Um, some of us here did, but many of us began our faith journeys in different churches, different denominations. Or maybe we never attended a church at all before coming to Hope. In, in my case, it may have just been a fluke, or maybe it was more the Holy Spirit at work, um, that it was a UCC church that Bob and I walked into that Sunday. But even though it was just the closest church to our house in our journey to find a home church at that point, even though that may have been a coincidence, it was with intention that we continued, that we stayed in the United Church of Christ and raised our family in it, ended up being ordained in it. It was with intention, and it is with intention, that we all gather here together, here, right here, in this sanctuary and online, every week as we worship together. And in a time when so many churches uh, are facing struggles, so many churches are struggling, and more and more people are leaving church or giving up on organized religion, that's really important. And... It's also at a time in our history, in our national lives, that we're faced with the ugliness and the dangers of this growing wave of Christian nationalism. So it's more important than ever to understand the identity of our denomination and how it relates to, how it informs, how it strengthens our faith journeys. So I hope this worship series will strengthen Hope UCC's connections to our denomination and to each other. Together, we'll explore this statement of faith that we hold. It's our foundational document so that we'll better understand the United Church of Christ. So when someone says to you, what church do you go to? What, what is that? Um, ugh, one of the things made me crazy in San Diego, there, I shouldn't even say this out loud, but somebody, another pastor, somebody had asked this pastor about the denomination, and she said, you know, the UCC, Unitarians Considering Christ. And I almost jumped across the table and said, that is not correct. We are the United Church of Christ, you know, we, so, yeah, I get a little <laughs> sensitive about it, but no. So if somebody says, you know, what church are you part of? I hope that our time together in the next few weeks just strengthens what you already know uh, about us and who we are and how we are. Uh, gosh, thinking about that just threw me off a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and nothing against Unitarians. They're great. Sorry. <laughs> um, but we are the United Church of Christ. So there. Take that home. If you remember nothing else from the service today, remember that. <laughs> the United Church of Christ, our denomination, and our congregation, we proudly affirm that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here, of course. We're spiritually diverse, and yet we are united through Christ, right? And that's the beauty of our statement of faith. It offers all of us, no matter where we've been or where we're going, it offers us a shared language that allows us to clarify our beliefs and it unites us. It unites us in our witness to our loving, our living God. So for the next few weeks, we'll dive into the history of the UCC. How exciting. I hope you all had an extra cup of coffee this morning. And uh, we're going to look at the history of the UCC a little bit. And in doing so, we'll explore how God really is still speaking to us through Scripture and guiding us on this journey. Um, we will strengthen. We will strengthen as we begin this new program year. I hope we strengthen our identity as a united Church of Christ. So that history first. Well, our denomination, it's always been a little different, right, since its very beginning. Uh, when the United Church of Christ was formed just 65 years ago, we're, you know, in the whole scheme of churches, we're kind of a teenager, and yet our roots 
are historic. So the United Church of Christ was formed 65 years ago, and it came from the merger of two different denominations. And those denominations had these deep historical, deep, deep roots. So anytime there's a merger, and I mean, even if you're talking about a merger of two just churches, oh, it's kind of a nightmare. They, oh, it is a lot of work. We're talking about two historic denominations merging. So you can only imagine the, well, the lawyers <laughs> and all the negotiations, the hand wringing, the, oh, I don't want to give up this. I don't want to give up that. You know, I can, I can only imagine what it was like around those tables. Um, it may have made some people decide to be druids. I'm not sure, but it would, may have sent them way far away. So governance, all of these things, constitutions, bylaws, everything has to be money, right? You know, uh, everything has to be figured out. But the United Church of Christ, the churches, the, the churches that came together to form the United Church of Christ, in spite of those huge, uh, overwhelming administrative tasks that they knew they were going to have to deal with, the leaders of this denominational merger, the leaders made writing the statement of faith the priority. That was the first thing they did. The statement of faith, that was the priority. They, they wanted to make sure that was taken care of before they ever got down to the uh, constitution, the bylaws, all that other stuff. The statement of faith, who, what, uh, why, that was the priority. They prayerfully, they faithfully understood that the foundation of our denomination must be based on our testimony, our continuing conversation with God. So they discerned that way to proclaim that in the writing of the statement of faith. It was approved and ratified, and then all the sausage got made with the Constitution and bylaws. But the statement of faith came first. And it is really um, a living document. It is a working, living document. If we believe that God is still speaking, it makes sense that the statement of faith will evolve as we evolve, as, as we're shaped in new and different ways by the world around us, right? So the original statement of faith from 1959, of course, even though at that time it was like really progressive and forward thinking for 1959, um, it still reflected that male-dominated leadership and the language and uh, that kind of patriarchal system of faith. So it was um, rewritten uh, and revised in 1977 and then again in 1981, uh, that male-dominated <clears throat> patriarchal kind of... Uh, power, power language was softened and yet emphasized, uh, if that makes sense, at the same time. And in 1981, it was rewritten as the form of a doxology, which is what we read today, a song of praise, where we are actually <clears throat> speaking from inside the statement rather than speaking outside of it, if that makes sense. Um, it's written in a way that we are immersed in the language. Maybe you noticed it as we offered it together. We're actively testifying to these gifts, these blessings that God has given us. And not just testifying to them, but we are uh, testifying to our commitment to live into these gifts. Our statement of faith, it's not something just we recite to others. It's something we offer as a prayer to God. We're going to examine over the next few weeks, we're going to examine this statement of faith in smaller pieces, right? We're going to take it just in chunks. So today our focus is on the first four sentences. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ, and, and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. 
You judge people and nations by your righteous will declared through prophets and apostles. You create persons in your own image. I think this line is especially significant to me. I am grateful that they have acknowledged and that we acknowledge in our statement of faith the beauty, the, this, the spirit of God which is within each one of us. This is a testimony uh, that is a truth for all of us, whether we have ever doubted ourselves or not. There are too many people in our communities all around who are made to feel marginalized. And as people of faith, we, we as testified to in this, we, we can't let that happen. We can't let that continue. And this part of our statement of faith, <clears throat> it reminds us, pokes at us, and says, God has created each of us with individuality, with a beauty and uniqueness, and that is God's own image, that beauty and uniqueness. That is a reflection of God. And that God, in, 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 in imbuing us with God's spirit, God loves us. Our individuality is important and good, and it is a reflection of our creator. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. Holy love, God's holy love for all of creation, that, that's God's motivation. That's, that's what's at the heart of all of this. And through relationship with God, through this faith journey, we find that purpose. We find forgiveness, we find grace, and we find righteousness. Think about these words in, in relation to our texts, our scriptural texts we heard today. In Jeremiah, good old Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah is called by God to bring God's people back to a place of faithfulness when they seriously, ooh, they did not believe that God was very present in their lives. It was a tumultuous time of exile. It was political and social and religious unrest and war. And they're like, yeah, thanks, God. Jeremiah, Jeremiah's called to bring them back, to to be God's voice, to show them, ah, God is here with you. Listen to God. But as their lives are turned upside down, as their cities are destroyed and their they're exiled, their friends and families are exiled or killed, and worst of all, their temple is destroyed. This is an uphill battle for Jeremiah. Jeremiah, he, he's very discouraged, and he begins to question his call. That's when God's like, hey, Jeremiah, come on, friend. Let's go to the potter's house. God calls Jeremiah there to have Jeremiah observe this artist at work. And it is here, oh, it's so beautiful, that we experience this, I think, one of the most powerful metaphors in Scripture, that potter and the potter's wheel, just the potter creating something. He's hard at work. And God, God calls Jeremiah there to offer this vision, like right, this tangible, tangible thing. Look, this is what is possible for God's people. Jeremiah watches as the clay is getting shaped into a pot. And God explains that Israel is formed in the same way. God speaks of destroying Israel, but also speaks of creating, of building, and planting. The choice is Israel's, and their actions will determine what is next. God's offering a chance to be recreated. But recreation, it has a cost. We have to remain faithful. We have to remember God is there. Yep, yeah, there is an implied threat in this metaphor of the potter's wheel. I am shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. But the threat is followed by what God desires for God's people. Turn now. Turn away from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. In turning from evil, in seeing a new way of being, we return to God and the love and hope that is offered there in God's, 
in God's embrace. Clay, it, it feels like a magical art medium. If you've ever used it and you can squish it, whether it's Play-Doh or actual like artistic clay you buy at the art supply store, you know, you can shape it while the artist is creating something with it. They're uh, doing all that stuff with it. It can be broken down. Like, that's not, ugh, what was I? Ugh. They can reshape it and start again. Try something different. I've watched artists throwing pots, and I've seen how they can just collapse in the process. Or, again, they see the finished product before it's fired, and they're like, you know, that's, that's not really what I was thinking. So they may take the clay, and they'll reshape it, start over again. And this might happen over and over and over again with the same piece of pottery, the same piece of clay. But the potter doesn't quit. She starts again and again and again because the possibility, the potential of that clay and what, uh, what the potter has in mind for that clay, that potential, it's just too good to pass up. It's too, too good. I'm not going to put this aside. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this and reshape it and do this. It's just too good for the potter to ignore the plans that potter has for that clay, the vision of its future function, its purpose in this world, its potential, oh, all the worth, the value, the beauty of this piece of potter, it's just, it makes that effort, the patience and the work, it makes it all worth it. And the mess, of course, too. That potter's wheel potter's wheel, Jeremiah witnessed, the potter's wheel we're all thinking of in our mind, we've all seen it. That is the place of creation. It's a place of recreation. As the potter works, spinning that wheel, shaping that clay, bringing out all the possibilities of that clay, we're reminded of our own creation and the possibility God sees, that God knows within each of us and in this community. So how will God use us? We're full of this potential, and God, God continues to shape us. Hope UCC has been shaped this place over the last 32 years, and the churches that came before it continues to shape us and form us, even as we break down and need to be reshaped and brought back with renewed purpose by this loving, this forgiving God. The chance to begin again? Whew, yes, please. The chance to be reshaped? Sign me up. Sign me up for that grace, because that's what that is. That's grace. Grace is something that the world doesn't always understand, and the world certainly doesn't offer us, but it is something that is abundant with God. Because God is all about love the creation, the interaction with people of faith throughout time, that is God's love for us. As I think about that potter and the clay and working at the wheel and being created in God's image and being saved from aimlessness and sin, and most of all, when I think about God's love, I see all of these things coming together at our communion table right here. Because some potter made these, this pitcher, this cup, some, some potter threw this plate that our bread that symbolizes the body and the, the cup that holds what symbolizes the blood of Christ, some potter made these elements, right? And you got to wonder was she like, oh, perfect, the first time through, or, oh, I got to start over. You know, the imperfections of this pottery in the moment, and yet here they hold what for us is this gift, this life-giving gift that God has invited us to share through God's Son, Jesus. The life, the death, the resurrection, the closeness to our Savior that we uh, share in this meal is held 
by this pottery, the purpose with which it was created to, to hold these elements of bread and wine. And I have to, I have to think that as they're sitting there ready for us to share and be renewed and um, recreated through, as each one of us takes and eats that bread and drinks the cup and we're reborn and transformed, like that's, that's remembering that love, isn't it? That's remembering that love. Each of us. Each of us. Molded, shaped, created in the image of God. Amen. When we perceive all the good we may do for Jesus Christ, we are eager to share. Jesus welcomes into discipleship those willing to give up all their possessions. What we give today is a symbol of our fuller devotion of all we have and all we are toward the realization of God's reign among us. Please join me in the um, prayer of giving. Loving God, there is no way we can settle accounts with you. We have, we have no, no way, way to repay you for all we have received from your hands. Yet we want to give our best to the work you call us to do through this, this community, community of seekers. We, we enter with renewed commitment and, and confidence, confidence the costly, the costly venture, venture of spreading love through, through your world. world. Amen. 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 May God be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks and, uh, to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy God, we praise and we bless you for creation and for the gift of life and for the abiding love that brings us close to you. You are the source of all blessing. And we thank you for making us in your own image, for forgiving us when we act as though you have no claim on us and for keeping us in your steadfast love. And we rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only one eternally begotten by you, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. And we remember Christ's death and we celebrate Christ's resurrection and in the beloved community of your church, we await Christ's return at the end of history. And we take courage from the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst and we offer you our praise for women and men of faith of every age who stand as witnesses to your love and justice. And as we are together gathered around this table, 
that we are each one of us invited to share. We remember that on the, the, night, the night of betrayal and desertion, that Jesus, bread, uh, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks. And then he shared it with his disciples saying, take this, my body, which is given to you, and do this in remembrance of me. And then after dinner, he took the cup and poured into the clay vessel, the cup they shared. And as he passed it to each of his friends, he said, this is the covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And as we together in this place, in this sanctuary and, on, and online, as we together share this holy meal, we remember that sacred time. And we remember Christ's death, Christ's resurrection, and we await Christ's return. Let us pray. O oh God, through this bread and this cup, may your spirit be a source of healing and consolation. And through this table of fellowship, make us one in the body of Christ. And may your spirit strengthen us when we feel weak, warm us when we are cold-hearted, bend us when we are stubborn, and move us when we are uncaring. And may your spirit always guide us in the way of love. Holy God, we come to your table now as people who have not merited our place around it, but people who have been graciously and wondrously invited to partake in this holy meal. As we eat and drink, may these elements be symbols that remind us of who we are and whose we are. And we ask all this in the name of the one who extends the invitation to us, your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And it is in this and through this broken bread that each one of us, each one of us participates in the body of Christ. And it is through this cup of blessing that each of us, each of us is invited into and participates in the new life Christ brings. We celebrate Holy Communion as an open table. All are invited to share this holy meal. And we take this and we accept this invitation in the spirit of love and gratitude with which it is offered. So we take and eat this bread of life. And we take and drink this cup of blessing. <clears throat> and I invite you to join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Our time in worship is concluded in this place. We have been, we have prayed together, we have sung together, we have shared this holy meal together, and we take what God has given us. We take those gifts out into the world and continue to live in that light and share that light and love and mercy that we, that we know here. We take that into the world, a world that desperately needs to know that as well. God welcomes your partnership in the gospel. Accept the cross of Christ and carry it. We have considered the cost of discipleship. <clears throat> we are willing and eager to pay the price. God expects to hold first place in our lives. We put everything we own on the line of faithfulness. We want to be obedient to the law of love. We want to show God's love in all we do. We are held in the thoughts of God. We are shaped and reshaped by the potter's hands. 
We are finding new patterns of faithfulness. We are discovering new reasons for joy. Amen. So, my friends, in the name of God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Guide, go into this world with peace and love, willing to serve the Lord. Amen.